Please be seated. Thank you, Claire and Alexandra, for leading us in the singing of O Canada, and Catherine for accompanying us on the piano. I will now invite Elaine Lee, the head prefect, to read the land acknowledgement. We wish to acknowledge this land on which Branksome operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Today, this meeting place is still a home to many indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work and go to school on this land. Welcome to installation. This afternoon, I will begin our program by acknowledging the God of Honor, which recognizes Branksom Hall's Scottish heritage and signals the opening of this traditional ceremony. The Honor God stands as a symbol of the value we place on a variety of aspects of leadership. The members of the Honor God represent their larger councils with the understanding of shared leadership collaboration, and community. Representing student life, representing the Service Learning Council, representing the Athletics Council, representing the Arts Council, Representing peer support. And representing the boarding council. Thank you to the members of the Honor Guard. As we begin Branksome's Hall installation of school leaders, it is now my pleasure to introduce a welcome message from our principal, Karen Jervich. Although she is unable to be here today, Ms. Jervich would like to share a few words with us on this special occasion. Good afternoon, and a very warm welcome to this year's installation ceremony. This is always such a special moment for our student leaders and their families. And I hope that each one of you enjoys what I'm sure will be a very memorable afternoon. Unfortunately, I'm unable to join you in person for this significant school tradition, but I wanted to share a few thoughts with you on some of the changes we have made to installation this year and what those changes signify as we come together to celebrate our students. For nearly a century, installation at Branksome Hall has been a celebration of student leadership and community. This year, in alignment with our work to define our four Branksome Hall values, sense of community, inclusiveness, creativity, and making a difference, we wanted to be intentional in recognizing student leadership in its broadest form and to take steps to ensure this is an inclusive celebration of community. One important way we have done this is to bring the ceremony back home to the school rather than holding it at an off-campus location. Installation is now happening at an earlier point in the school year, so it reflects a natural starting point and bookends this year with our green carpet and graduation ceremonies in June. We have also made changes to the program to acknowledge a broader definition of student leadership. This has been a year-long process, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank each member of the working group for their thoughtful contributions and hard work. This group included students, teachers, staff members, parents, past parents, and alumni who guided our work in understanding installation as a celebration of our history and traditions, and who contributed to our being more intentional about the future programming and the need for installation to honor diverse voices and experiences. And speaking of honoring diverse voices, 
we could not have a more appropriate keynote speaker than Miranda Duponcier to share her thoughts on leadership and her own journey with you today. Miranda is a Branksom Hall graduate of the class of 87 and an award-winning Canadian film director and producer who truly exemplifies 21st century leadership and the transformative power each one of us possesses to make a difference. I thought I would close with a brief word on our school's commitment to our values throughout the decades since our founding. As many of you will know, the ceremony of the flags is the tradition honoring our original school values, truth, justice, honesty, and purity. In the same way that we have made intentional changes this year to ensure that installation is a more diverse and inclusive celebration, I think it is important to recognize that our values, like our language, change with time. This installation ceremony is a celebration of our school values and how they have evolved it is also an opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to leadership and community and to supporting you, our students, as you prepare for your own exciting future. I extend my warmest congratulations and thank you for making a difference here at Branksome Hall and beyond. Enjoy this time together as you celebrate leadership, community, and our unique Branksome Hall values. I would like to take a moment and add my welcome and tell you what makes me proud to belong to the Branksome community. Five years ago, I vividly recall sitting in the grade eight public speaking competition, anticipating the persuasive speakers, speeches of the four finalists. Callista Mortimer, who is here today in her role as our student government prefect, stood up and in her speech, she boldly questioned why Branksome, a non-denominational school, held installation in a church. While she acknowledged the beauty and the grandeur of the church, she persuaded us that this called for our thoughtful consideration. I am proud when students' voice is authentic, respectful, and fearless. Installation 2019 will feel different to installations of the past in location, timing, and atmosphere. It's an important and an exciting shift. And while these changes have taken us a few years of thought, consultation, and conversation, they may for some feel sudden and uncomfortable. And moving away from the familiar asks us to reflect and to widen our perspective. But this is not the first change that has been made to installation. We've had a few different in, uh, installation locations over the years. In fact, starting back all the way in 1928, installation was actually held in the Branksome Gym. And it wasn't until the 1950s that it was held at Rosedale United Church. And this year, as Ms. Jervich said, nearly 100 years later after installation began, we decided to bring it back here to the AWC. And I think this feels like the right place for this important ceremony. Also worth noting is that 25 years ago, this ceremony was named Installation of the Prefects because actually it was a ceremony primarily in their honor but over the years, we've added a celebration of all kinds of leadership positions. And today, we've broadened it still further to include personal stories of leadership. But through these various changes, the core intention of installation remains because traditions are important and precious. They connect us with our alums and they anchor us to our 116 year old history and I'm proud when both our school evolves and reaffirms traditions. And I believe that every one of us sitting here today knows you do not need an elected position to be a leader and have a positive impact. What matters is that you trust your voice, 
you make responsible decisions, and you take meaningful action. And this afternoon, you are going to hear many inspiring examples of how this happens. Whatever path your individual leadership journey takes, we are united at Branksome in our resolve to act always with care, empathy, and humility. We know we will not always get it right, and I am sure that this afternoon, we will not get it all right. What matters is our connection to each other, our shared humanity, and that we always presume good intent. And this is what makes me most proud to be part of the Branksome community. So now we continue our tradition of welcoming back an alum speaker to share her leadership learning journey with the Branksome community. And it is my great pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Miranda Depansier, a member of the class of 1987 and our 2013 Alison Roach Alumna Award recipient. Born and raised in Toronto, Miranda arrived at Branksome in grade seven, and I remember her well. She was always strong-minded, creative, and an original thinker, someone who even in grade seven was very much her own person. And as you will hear from her shortly, I do not believe that anything has changed in that regard. From a very young age, Miranda was drawn to acting. By grade 10, she was playing the part of Anne in our senior school production of Anne of Green Gables. And it was a really pivotal moment because one night, a prom prominent casting director was in the audience looking for young actors for the upcoming film version of the classic Canadian novel. And Miranda was soon cast as Josie Pye in the beloved 1985 TV movie. That's why you want to try out for the senior drama production, <laughs> right? And from that point, Miranda was on a whirlwind career trajectory, being cast in TV shows, movies, and performing on stage. She still found time, however, to attend Concordia University and then New York University. By the late 1990s, Miranda moved from success in acting and turned her sights to production, working with Robert Redford, Steven Soderbergh, and George Clooney just to name a few. I know many of us are particular fans of Miranda's work, executive producing Anne with an E. I know I am a great fan. This, it's a wonderful reimagining of the classic book and film. It's on Netflix and CBC. And the third season will be available for streaming in just a few days on September the 22nd. Miranda had the idea, the dream, and the vision to make a new fresh version of this magical film series. And this year, the show received no less than 15 Canadian Screen Award nominations with seven wins, a truly extraordinary outcome. And despite the soaring arc of her career, she has, since her days at Branksome, felt two things have remained constant the friendship she forged here as a student, which continue to this very day. In fact, she's sitting here with her dear friend, Sasha, um, and also her passion for her work in social change. And as she moved into directing, Miranda continued to be inspired by stories of individuals overcoming challenges and transforming their, their lives and the lives of others. And this is clearly evident in her latest film, The Grizzlies, which debuted at the Toronto International Film Festival last September and won the Directors Guild of Canada Award. Yeah. So now let's take a moment and watch, a trailer, watch the trailer for the film, The Grizzlies. It's a bad scene for a lot of the kids up here, eh? 
what's being done. You lived up here a long time? 6,000 years. Welcome to the edge of the world. You have 21 students in your class. Miranda Atatahak. Shani Ignak Ignakpaga. Ignakpaga. Sorry. <laughs> Jason Midovic. He's not coming back. Another night out in the call. I put a word to my neck as I'll throw. my team really with it? Get hit it, get with it. No limit when I get back under the road. No These kids, they need an outlet to get involved in something besides this damn night culture. Sports. Who the hell are you to say what we need? <laughs> Hey bud, you wanna come check out lacrosse Wednesday after school? Flyers won't work. You gotta show respect there. Eh? You guys like sports, huh? I don't like to run. Come on guys, let's turn down the suck and turn up the good. Now are you with me? Yeah! Um, we got a bit of a problem. They don't want me going to a white man's school. He has to hunt. His family is starving. We don't need to defend our way of life to a southerner. Family comes first, not school. That's a white man's game. You don't want them reaching for something that they care about? There's a cost for reaching. Haven't you figured out yet that I don't know what the hell I'm doing? This is not about you. All of us have made sacrifices to be here. We've been dealing with this stuff for years and we're still here. Instead of drinking or fighting, we are proud, strong, full of hope. Who are we? Really? Are you in a hurry? Do you, do you need a ride? Oh, no, no, thanks. I'm just running. From, from what? Please join me now in warmly welcoming Miranda de Pantier back to Branksome Hall. Miranda. How's it going? You might be wondering, uh, what does this movie have to do with me? A Branksome girl living thousands of miles from Kugluktuk, Nunavut. Well, the lessons I learned making this film were a surprise for me as well. I've been an uh, actress, a singer, and then a producer for over 35 years now, performing on stages from smoky little dive bars just down the street on Sherburne to the Royal Alexandra Theater, singing in Les Mis. And uh, I've made film and TV for HBO, CBC, and with an E for Netflix. I've worked with movie stars like Mark Ruffalo and Gwyneth Paltrow. And when Christopher Plummer won an Academy Award for an independent film that I produced called Beginners, he thanked me from the stage. But honestly, the experience of making this film, The Grizzlies, <laughs> already crying, has been by far the most surprising, challenging, and rewarding experience of my career. Hey, Branksome community. It is such an honor to be here with you today on this awesome, exciting moment in your lives for you grads, your last year to suck the marrow from high school before you head out into the big bad world. And for the rest of you, starting a new school year, when everything is possible. I remember that feeling, sitting right where all of you are sitting. I know that feeling. <laughs> but I certainly never imagined standing here before you today. Because here's the thing. I'm not exactly the ideal Branksome girl of my time. I was not the best student. I didn't win all the awards. I never got elected clan chieftain. Basically, I was in the principal's office a lot. So 
I'm not the person who's gonna stand up here and tell you how to keep well the road. You've got enough examples of that. But here are three helpful things that I have learned along the way. Number one, trust your gut. I started working on the Grizzlies over 10 years ago. I'd seen an ESPN news piece about a group of kids in a small Arctic town who were transformed by the power of sport. It immediately brought me to tears, and I knew that I wanted to tell this story on film. The truth is, I harbored a dirty little secret at Branksom. I was the jokester who loved performing in school plays on the outside, but on the inside, on and off, I suffered from depression. Mental health wasn't a word we discussed in school or at home in my day at Branksom. When I was sad or struggling, I was taught to suck it up and get over it, get busy, get happy. Basically ignore my feelings, which I've learned over time is about the worst thing you can do. But although I was a crappy student, <laughs> I was also on the cross country team at Branksom. And sports really helped me get through tough times. Running allowed me to move through my feelings and process them, and my teammates became anchors of support. So back in the spring of 2008, given the sports had empowered me at Branksome, I trusted my gut that this was a story that might resonate for others as well. So I went to the Arctic for the first time, thinking I was gonna go make a sports drama. I'd never been to the Arctic, I'd never met an Inuit person, and on the first trip I met two kids who were part of the original Grizzlies program, a girl named Miranda and a boy named Adam. They took me around, cracked open their lives to me, and at the end of three days, I waited patiently to see if they would sign away their life rights so I could start developing this movie. Miranda told me that she didn't know if she wanted to give me her life rights because she didn't want to remember how bad life had been in her town before the Grizzlies program had begun. The suicide rates in Kugluktuk were the highest rates in North America at the time. But she said if the film didn't get made, then there was a chance her town could go back there again. So she signed away her life rights to me and said if this film can show other communities how to get healthier, then she wanted to see it made. And then Adam told me that before the Grizzlies, he was a drug addict and an alcoholic when the lacrosse stick went into his hand and everything changed for him. I asked him how old he was when that happened and he said he was 13. I came home from that first trip to the Arctic petrified and feeling immense pressure and responsibility to get this story right. These young people had trusted in me, so I better not screw it up. Suddenly, I wasn't just making a movie, this was way bigger. A story about real people in a part of Canada I'd never known about, and these young people were dealing with things so much more challenging than anything I'd experienced myself. Vital issues for indigenous Canadians. And remember, this was 10 years ago, before anyone in Canada was really talking about words like reconciliation or decolonization. Anything worthwhile takes time. A lot of hard work and a lot of heavy lifting. And often things don't go the way you expect them to. But if you can keep listening to and trusting your gut to be your guide on the journey to reaching your goals, it's worthwhile. Which leads me to my next lesson. Once I understood that making a film about culture I knew nothing about, I realized I needed partners who knew Inuit culture and the traumatic history much better than I did. I was very lucky early on to meet two awesome Inuit women, Stacey Oglick McDonald and Alethea Arnacook Burrell, emerging filmmakers in their own rights, who became my vital teachers. I had a lot to learn and they were respectful and patient with me. So I stumbled through what I now refer to as an experience of living reconciliation. I had to remain humble and apologize when I made mistakes, and I made a lot of them. I knew how to make a film in Hollywood by then, but I knew nothing about what it feels like to be an indigenous person. So if I wanted to make an authentic film, I needed to listen. And if I'd insisted on being the boss and doing it my way the whole time, it wouldn't have worked. 
Thankfully, these partners were with me for the whole 10 years and the many times I almost threw in the towel. There were ups and downs, trying to raise money, shooting the Arctic, unpredictable weather, a tiny crew, and oh yeah, first time actors. There were no famous 15-year-old indigenous movie stars, so we had to go and find them. We ended up auditioning 600 kids all over the Arctic Circle and flying 60 finalists to the Eastern Arctic for a series of arts and acting workshops. On the last day of the first workshop, a young man got up and said, I lost my cousin, my girlfriend, my best friend, the entire front lineup of my hockey team to suicide. This needs to stop. And this movie is our chance to do that, to help the world understand. Another kid said, raise your hands if you've lost someone to suicide. And every single kid in the room put up their hand. The kids were all crying. It was extremely emotional. I stood there paralyzed, not knowing what to do. I was way out of my comfort zone. I wasn't a teacher. I wasn't a psychologist. I was a filmmaker. And I thought, what the hell have I done? I built this workshop, and these kids are now traumatized. <sighs> And as I stood there in shock, one of the Inuit youth stood up into the middle of the group. And he said, look to your right and look to your left. Here is someone who understands, someone who knows. We can lean on each other. And then each and every one of them stood up and started chanting, new start, new start, new start. It was one of the most profound things I have ever experienced in my life. And in that moment, I learned that it wasn't my job to tell these kids what they needed or how to get through it. They knew, you know, much better than anyone else does. I continued to have experiences like that throughout the entire 10 years of making this movie. I've been profoundly moved by the Inuit kids I've met along the way, their strength, their resilience, their humor in the face of tragedy. And when I wanted to give up, it was the kids I worked with and then I hired that kept me going. They had lives 10 times harder than anything I've experienced and they were finding ways to thrive with grace. So if they could do it, so could I. Even your fellow students that you may think you have nothing in common with might end up being people that you'll end up learning from or needing help from down the road. Like, you know, Sasha Darling now who can give me financial advice, right? That's a good thing. I can sneak her into parties at TIFF, so. <laughs> Remain open to everyone. Be kind. Lesson number three, be yourself. When I started out, my biggest dream was to win awards. It's easy to get drawn to shiny, pretty, material things. But it turns out awards just are dust collectors on a shelf. We did a d huge tour of the Grizzlies to remote northern communities earlier this year, towns that don't have cinemas so that young indigenous kids across the country could see a film that represented them. One evening, a young indigenous girl came up after the screening of the Grizzlies and said the day before was the anniversary of her mother's death and she'd planned to kill herself. But now having seen the Grizzlies, she wants to stay alive and lean into her friends and her future. No award can ever come close to beating that. It's hard to remain humble and authentic when you're trying to chase things and climb the ladder to success. But if you can stay true to yourself and your values, your life will be richer and deeper. No amount of money or a killer wardrobe or a big number of Instagram followers is ever going to make you happy. Seek the truth and the magic will come. Go find something you love, lean into it, a sport, a class, a hobby, an idea, a person, something that intrigues you, maybe something that scares you. You've got one chance on this planet, so do what you want to do. Not what your parents want or your friends or your teachers might think is good for you, but what inspires you. And if you don't know what's true for you, then just go try it all because you don't know what you like until you try it. I knew nothing about Canada's North, but making this film changed my life. And here's the thing about success, it's defined by you. 
You decide what success means for you. Trust your gut, be kind to yourself, and maybe wander off the road every once in a while with a thick skin and an open heart. Thank you. Miranda, I don't really think there's anything more for me to say because the audience said it all to you. I will just say you, you had no time to come here today. When I first invited you, you said, I have no time. I am wrapping up Anne with an E. It cannot happen. And I said, it needs to happen. We need you. And Miranda did exactly what she asked you to do. She opened her heart, and she did it because it's Branksome, and she did it for you, our students. And all I can say is thank you. And we have a small token, Miranda. This is very Branksome. We never don't have a thank you for our speakers. <laughs> so a small token of our appreciation, and also we'd like to give a charitable donation in your honor, and I believe you'd like it to be given to an organization that is protecting climate change, and we would be thrilled to do that. So this is for you. Well, it's time for a little musical interlude, which I think actually we need. So <laughs> I would like now to introduce our musical interlude with grade 10 student, Catherine Jo, and music teacher, Ms. Alexandra Bork. And the piece is entitled, Meditation from Tice for Piano and Violin by Jules Massenet.
Thank you, Catherine and Miss Bork, for that truly beautiful rendition. This year, as we expand our celebration of leadership to include personal stories of leadership, I invite our club's prefect, Kendall Christie, followed by our head prefect, Elaine Lee, to come up to the podium. Kendall. Clubs are a vibrant part of school life at Branksome Hall with a variety of offerings in each area of CAS, creativity, activity, and service. For me, clubs have played an important part in my life at Branksome. As a new grade seven student, I attended my first clubs fair, eagerly signing up for more than 10 clubs. And while I wasn't able to continue with them all, participating in clubs has allowed me to pursue diverse interests and to explore new opportunities. I have nurtured my creative side through the Trivia Club and have learned about culture through the Afriview and South Asian clubs. Club heads take up a special leadership role, bringing students together to collaborate and learn about a shared interest and creating caring communities where friendships grow. I am honored to recognize the 2019-2020 club heads and look forward to celebrating new clubs and club heads in an assembly in January. Thank you. <laughs> I, would, I would like to ask all club heads to now stand and be recognized by the Branksome community. Congratulations. Thank you, Kendall. New this year, students and employees were invited to nominate grades 7 to 12 students who, without an elected leadership position, have demonstrated leadership and have inspired positive action in the interest of the greater good. Today, we will hear about three students whose personal leadership learning has transformed their thinking about what it means to be a community leader. I would now like to invite grade 10 student Kaitlin Kuklowitz followed by grade 10 students, Caitlin and Lauren Grierson, to share their story of personal leadership. Leadership comes in many forms. We do not always see it, but it's almost always there. When I look around this room, I see many leaders. Our community thrives because of those who are determined to empower and motivate others, who make an effort to support their peers and spread positivity. I strongly believe that promoting and embracing these attributes will take Branksome to the next level. Good afternoon. My name is Caitlin and I am very excited to be speaking here today about my story of leadership. I am a competitive figure skater and I started skating when I was two. Being a competitive athlete is difficult at times, but for the most part, it's amazing because I get to do what I love every day. This summer, I was one of six novice skaters in Canada selected to compete at one of the two North American Cup events. Finally, all of my early morning and late night practices paid off. Everyone is capable of accomplishing their goals if they are willing to put the work in. A good leader works hard, is passionate about what they do, and demonstrates to others how to succeed. The road to get to this point in my skating was certainly not a smooth one. Failing to achieve certain goals, injuries, and making mistakes in competition helped me understand the importance of perseverance. Nobody's perfect, and we're not always going to succeed on the first try. The important thing is learning from our failures and mistakes so that we get closer to success on the next try. I know it's easy to say, keep trying. Have any of you thought to yourself, what if I never succeed? It's normal to get discouraged. I couldn't count the number of times I've fallen, and I've had some pretty epic face plants. At the rink, I overcame these falls with the support and encouragement from my friends and coaches. 
the simplest, come on, you've got this, is all the motivation I need to land my jumps. My point is that sometimes we are so focused on our own goals and work that we don't realize how encouraging others can go a long way. Another way to overcome challenges is to follow other people that have dealt with similar ones. In my case, I was inspired by Caitlin Osmond, who overcame an injury to win three Olympic medals in figure skating. Everyone can find someone to look up to and help them follow their goals. By working hard and persevering, someday someone will want to follow you. Finally, I've learned a lot about being nervous. We are all going to experience this feeling at one point or another, whether it's taking a test, performing, or playing in an important match. I remember getting ready to take the ice for one of my competitions. I told my coach how nervous I was. He said that nerves are your friend and they mean you care about what you're doing. Just remember why you're here, because you love what you do. I always remember this when I'm about to compete. So if you're feeling nervous, think of why you are there and just trust your skills. The road ahead for my skating is long, including many learning opportunities from the good and the bad, and definitely more epic face plants. Ultimately, my goal is to go to the Olympics. By putting in the hard work, and with the support from my teachers and coaches, friends and family, possibly I'll get there. At the same time, I'll support those around me on their road to success. Hopefully now, you'll look up a little more often and express your encouragement to others. Our community will overflow with positivity, and you'll see the difference it makes. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin. And I'm Lauren. We are twins in grade 10 and started at Branksome last year. We know that all of you are leaders with your own leadership story to tell. We are honored today to have this opportunity to share with you our personal experience of leadership. In 2016, we started planting trees to take responsibility for our carbon footprint. We set a launch goal to plant 1,000 trees and we created Tree CO2 to educate and inspire tree planting through action and education. There are three main branches to Tree CO2. Tree CO2 ice cream, our student ambassador program or SAP, and tree planting and advocacy. Tree CO2 ice cream has flavors that are tree themed like maple, birch bark, which is vanilla cinnamon, and green leaf, which is mint. All ice cream profits go towards tree planting. The SAP is a student tree planting leadership initiative. We are so proud of the grade eights for their SAP tree planting record of 200 trees. We started tree planting at community tree planting events. With the help of family, friends, and classmates, we quickly surpassed our goal of 1,000 trees. Having planted 1,658 trees, we reset a new goal to 1,000 trees each. This gave us a big idea. What if there were 1,000 trees planted for each of the world's youth? We call this idea the Global Forest Project, or the GFP. The GFP encourages strength-based collaboration to plant 1,000 trees for every youth in the world, age 15 to 24. We define strength-based collaboration as the cooperation between two or more parties contributing according to their strengths and abilities. The United Nations supports a goal to plant one trillion trees. With 1.2 billion global youth aged 15 to 24, 1,000 trees per global youth exceeds this goal. We estimate there are 350 youth aged 15 to 24 here today. Together, we would need to plant 350,000 trees to meet the one trillion tree target. As a whole, Canada has the ability to plant 117 billion trees to support the one trillion tree goal. Next week is the United Nations Climate Action Summit in New York. 
Last spring, our family responded to a public request for proposals from the UN Nature-Based Solutions Workstream. As a result, this weekend, our family will be participating in climate discussions convened by the UN Secretary General. Lorne and I will also be presenting the GFP at Nature's Climate Hub on Sunday. As we reflect on our leadership learning with trees CO2, we have been surprised in three different ways. The first surprise has been the importance of curiosity. We were curious about the WE Global Learning Center's official opening. This led us to participating in WE Charities Social Entrepreneurship Program and so many incredible opportunities, including speaking at WE Day. The second reflection we were surprised by was that our project has led us just as much as we have led the project. Each step we took led to a new unexpected opportunity. Our third surprise has been the tremendous support for youth. Like never before, there is mentorship, collaboration, and funding for youth-led initiatives. In conclusion, we have received some very wise advice that we would like to share with you. Choosing a cause that is personally meaningful and setting a goal that is manageable is the best chance for successful leadership. Thank you to everyone at Branksome who has made our leadership experience possible. Thank you, Elaine and Kendall, for your introductions. And to Caitlin, Lauren and Caitlin, thank you for your words. You were truly inspiring, and you have given us all the message that our actions can have a positive impact on others and on the world. Thank you very much for speaking at Installation today. We now turn to our Grade 6 leaders. At Installation, we have always recognized our graduating year students as they start their final year in senior school, and we will soon do this. But new this year is the invitation for each student in the grade six classes to be individually acknowledged. And I would now like to ask Ms. Andrea Mills and Ms. Erica Lowe, assistant heads of the junior school and PYP coordinators, to the podium and they will introduce the grade sixes. And Mrs. Amanda Kennedy, head of junior school, and parent and incoming board member, Ms. Clara Angati, will shake the hands of the grade six student leaders. Leadership in the junior school is about leading by example and inspiring others to do the same. Whether organizing an action initiative, walking younger students to the playground at morning drop-off, leading clan events, or speaking at assembly, our students model strong leadership skills through both positional and small relational behaviors each day. They have a powerful impact on our community. Today, the grade six students are being recognized as the leaders of the junior school. To honor this responsibility, the students were given pins at the Junior School Assembly last week. We would now like to welcome them up to be recognized. Grade sixes, we are excited to see where your paths will lead this year. Channing Abbott. Alexandria Black. Olivia Blair. Juliette Boris. Lillian Boyle. Victoria Brady, Lisa Brunga, Julianne Campbell, Madeline Campbell, Regan Carmody, Aya Churon, Alyssa Danji, Anya Dua, Karina Fang, Poppy Fowler, Abby Goldstein, Melody, Melody Hellman, Vida Huang, Iris Liao, Lucy Liu, Victoria Liu. Audrey McQueen, Berlin Mather, Kate McKenna, 
Maya Montoya, Lola Neinstein, Michelle Nguyen, Naomi Reese, Issa Reckers, Anna Ritchie, Lucia Rovazzi, Shanella Sanadira, Haley Shepard, Sien Singh, Madeline Sissons, Emily Smith, Serena Srivastava, Sophie Veldor, Emily Wang, Laura Wang, Marin Wei, Adelaide Whale, Isabella Wijisandera, Carrie Yao. All the best to our grade six student leaders. Thank you very much, Ms. Mills and Ms. Lowe. And we are now at the part of our program where we are celebrating our graduating year students. GYs, each day we call upon you to model the Branksom values and to uphold our school <laughs> traditions. And this is a very special group of graduating year students. We love your energy and the way in which you engage with the arts, athletics, service, and innovation, and you bring joy to our community in the way in which you do everything, assemblies, spirit week, and in your connection with each other. So. first students who will be invited up to be presented with their graduating year pins are the graduating year representatives and the alumni and parents association representatives. And then we will give pins out to the students who have been with us since kindergarten. And this group are going to be presented their pins by Ms. Sasha Darling, alum, past parent, board member, and president of the parents association and Ms. Eva Lau, parent and board members. Please, would you come forward? And I start off by inviting our three graduating year representatives to come forward. Sarah Kent, Carolyn Logish, and Hope Rutledge. <laughs> We would now like to present the alum and parents association representatives with their AAPA rep pins and their GY pins. So would Sienna Ayani Palacio and Letitia New please come forward. We continue today our long tradition of acknowledging students who have been at Branksome since kindergarten. So I'm pleased to announce that the new name for these graduates is Reed Acres Graduates. And I'll tell you why we chose this name. It's a really apt name because it has so much Branksome history tied to it. Reed Acres is the name of the building where kindergarten is housed, a space itself that has history associated with it because it was named after one of Branksome's historic school leaders, our longest serving principal, Miss Edith Reed. This year, there are 12 students who have been with us at Branksome since kindergarten, two students in senior kindergarten and 10 since junior kindergarten. And we know that they will win their, wear their pins proudly in recognition of their long association with Branksome Hall. Will each of these students please come forward when I call your name? Please then remain on the stage to have a photo taken. With us since senior kindergarten are Elizabeth Sullivan 
and Eliza Peters. And with us since junior kindergarten are Madeline Bickley, Adele Crate Lawrence, Victoria Falk, Tang Gilbert, Miranda Kim, Catherine Kosh, Alicia Lee, Elizabeth Melnick, Caitlin Stevens, and Alexa Vasilakos. And any parent who wishes to come forward and take a photo, please do. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. upon Diploma Two Advisors, Ms. Nancy Olfit, music teacher in the Performing Arts Department, and Mr. Andrew Schroeder, teacher in the Mathematics Department, to read the names of the graduates. The pins will be presented by Ms. Sasha Darling, 87, and Ms. Miranda Dupontier, 87. And we ask that you hold your applause until the end, so GYs come up when your name is called. Zena Aboud Sayi, Golnoush Abazari, Lexi Adler, Aidan Alderson, Lucy Allen, Lauren Armstrong, Zena Bazim, Emily Bain, Scarlett Barker, Ellen Belbeck, Zoe Bellin Brown, Sophia Burrs, Julia Black, Rosie Butterworth, Fiona Campuzano Art, Zita Chai, Emma Chan, Jahong Chen, Dorothy Chang, Christy Chang. Christy Kendall. <laughs> Kendall Christie. <laughs> Claire Christie, pardon me. Jiwon Chun. Emma Crane, Paige Crawley. Phoebe Dawson. Emily Dockrell. Lily Dong. Sarah Ebenezer, Mariam El Alawi, Sarah Etahade, Ariane Etahade, Fatima Fadel, Katie Fairbrother, Maya Forte, Lily Fraser, Amna Gohar. Ava Gray Eyes, Kate Gronawagen, Judy Gould, Connie Gould, Chloe Hind, Sophie Ho, Alana Hodgson, Kelly Humphrey, Maya Jane, Riva Jangra. Sophie Kedwell, Laura Keyworth, Tegan Kinnear, Veronique Knapp, Eva Corley Myron, Katrina Korotsky, Lara Kuchba, Alexandra Lamb. Jessica Lau, Naomi Lau, Tara Lee, 
Elaine Lee, Annie Lynn. Clara McDonald, Madeline Mackey, Jade Mare Douglas, Izzy Matthews, Georgia McClellan, Lavanya Mahendarata, Madeline Moness, Callista Mortimer, Anna Mucci, Charlotte Naughty, Chloe. Anne, Leticia New, Mason O'Connor, Alana Phelps, Rebecca Quinn, Christiane Reed, Isabel Reisman, Lillian Wrong, Margaret Savage, Ilian Schwaninger, Emma Sheldon, Shelley Shen, Izzy Sloan, Pilar Steers, Priya Suresh Raj, Daphne Tembakis, Nicolette Temple, Mia Tripp, Logan Vaughn, Paige Wanzel. Auden Wells, Stephanie Wong, Lucy Woke Nyman, Nancy Yao, Charlotte Young, Mariam Zaman. Thank you, Ms. Olfit and Mr. Schroeder, and congratulations and all the best to our GY students. Let's give them a warm round of applause. We now move to the section of our program where we introduce clan chieftains, middle school clan representatives, junior school clan leaders, and our prefects and head prefect. I would like to invite Ms. Kim Nyers, Assistant Head Senior in Middle School CAS, to the podium, and she will be followed by Ms. Andrea Mills, Assistant Head Junior School and PYP Coordinator. When you have a big school like Branksome, it is very important to have smaller units within it to which individuals can belong. Advisors are one way and clans are another. Clans are special because they belong to the students. And in the senior school, the chieftains are elected by the members of each clan. The chieftains and their helpers work hard to create clan spirit through sports activities, games, and competitions. Thank you, chieftains. It is now my pleasure to introduce the senior school clan chieftains. I ask that you please come forward as I call your name. Campbell, Veronique Knapp. Douglas. Alexandra Lamb. McGregor, Emma Chan. McLean, Mia Tripp. McAlpine, Katrina Kotorotki. McLeod, Charlotte Naughty. Ross, Emily Dockrell. And Scott, Kate Grenewagen. In the middle school, clan representatives are elected from grade eight. Please come forward when your name is called. Campbell, Isabella Cray. Douglas, Amrita Gujarati. McGregor, Tegan Trainer. 
McLean, Beatrice Fortier. McAlpine, Ellie Gewertz Steele. McLeod, Stella Paquinet. Ross, Caitlin Stennett. And Scott, Sabrina Real. As the oldest stu students in the junior school, all of our grade six students have a responsibility to be good leaders. This afternoon, 14 students represent the junior school as banner carriers as well as fall clan leaders. They will join the senior clan chieftains and the grade eight clan representatives at the front. Please come forward to stand in formation. Representing the junior school clans today are Bruce, Aya Chiron, and Issa Reckers. Duncan, Olivia Blair. Fraser, Melody Hellman, Victoria Liu. Gordon, Berlin Mather, and Michelle Nguyen. Grant, Anna Ritchie. Johnston, Sophie Valdor, Victoria Brady, and Audrey McQueen. McDonald, Adelaide Whale, and Juliet Boris. And Robertson, Shanella Senadira. invited to come forward and take a photo if you wish. Please join me again in congratulating all our clan chieftains and leaders. Thank you everyone. Please return to your seats. We will now introduce our prefects. These are the elected graduating year students who hold major student leadership portfolios at our school. Each student has an individual portfolio. As a group, the prefects provide leadership to their grade and to the school, and on the quality of that leadership rests much of the quality of school life in any given year. Prefects have dem a demanding job because they are a liaison between their peers, teachers, and the administration, and because they uphold and model the Branksome values, demonstrating a high standard of behavior in every aspect of school life. Theirs is a significant responsibility. I admire them for taking it on, and I respect them for the collaborative way in which they are doing it. Prefects, please come forward and stand in formation at the front of the platform while I introduce each of you. As I call your name, Mrs. Carrie Weinstock will present you with your pin and you will be congratulated by Mr. Don Galloin, board member and past parent. Admissions, Claire Christie. Arts and Innovation, Alexa Vasilakos. Athletics, Rosie Butterworth. Boarding, Georgia McClellan. Clans, Calicia Lee. Clubs, Kendall Christie. Junior School, Adele Crate Lawrence. Middle School, Tegan Kinnear. Service Learning, Izzy Sloan. Social and Well Being, Sophie Ho. Student Government, Callista Mortimer. Head Prefect, Elaine Lee. Please join me in congratulating our 2019-20 Prefects. Karen, please come forward to take a picture if you wish. Thank you, prefects. You may be seated. Oh, sorry, wait, I'm missing the best part. I think they've been planning that since nine o'clock this morning. Elaine, please join me at the podium.
It is now my pleasure to introduce Head Prefect Elaine Lee. Elaine is renowned for her enthusiasm, dedication, and collaborative spirit. As a Girls Circle leader and volunteer in the Leacock Foundation's Leap into Literacy Summer Literacy Program, her kindness, quick wit, and bright smile immediately put others at ease. Last year, she traveled to South Africa to teach at our partner school, QGAP, where she may easily made connections with people she met Elaine is naturally attuned to diversity and is truly curious and caring in her interactions. Since Elaine arrived at Branksome in junior school, she has embarked on her academic and co-curricular experiences and has honed her creative thinking through her rich portfolio of CAS involvement. In recent years, this has included Perennial, World Affairs Conference, Senior Robotics Team, and the Gay Straight Alliance. In her new role as head prefect, Elaine is building community and helping others to reach their goals. Her leadership demonstrates emotional intelligence and exceptional character. She is continually honing her leadership skills and consolidating her ability to organize others and build consensus. Elaine demonstrates an authentic interest in learning and excellence. Please join me in welcoming this year's head prefect, Elaine Lee, a proud member of the McGregor clan. Good afternoon, Mrs. Weinstock, Ms. Nayaz, Ms. Duponcier, board members, parents, special guests, employees and students, welcome to installation. As an avid reader and writer, I strongly believe in the power of storytelling. I have grown up devouring books and movies and then for a long time afterwards, thinking about the characters. I'm sure many of you can fondly recall following the countless adventures of Harry Potter and Percy Jackson. For some of you, maybe it's watching Titanic for the first time, watching Jack slip away into the icy depths of the, of the Atlantic Ocean and bitterly wondering if there really wasn't enough room on that door. <laughs> My story at Branksom began in grade three. Beginning in the junior school, I was encouraged to think critically and become internationally minded. I studied Icelandic culture in grade five and went on a field trip to the parliament building. I completed my grade six culminating exhibition group presentation in the form of a skit on the topic of barriers against girls' education in developing countries. As I entered the senior school, my world expanded rapidly. As I volunteered at Leap into Literacy Summer Camp and traveled to Branksome Hall Asia and South Africa, meeting new people and hearing their stories. I am lucky to have had so many global engagement opportunities as they have shaped me into the person I am today and have become chapters of my own story. As much as engaging with the world fascinated me, learning about stories of injustice also made me feel heavy and helpless. Sometimes I found myself choosing ignorance over learning about complex issues so that they would not infringe on my comfort. Then I heard two stories of women who, through their activism, have created widespread change. This afternoon, I would like to tell you about these two instances where I felt empowered to create change and how you too, can choose empowerment over anger. I had always thought that being young would hold me back from creating meaningful change. Then I heard about Greta Thunberg, who started a school strike in August 2018 outside the Swedish parliament, holding up a sign protesting climate change. Recently, Greta made a two-week journey across the Atlantic Ocean on a zero-emissions solar-powered sailboat from England to New York. In order to reduce her own carbon footprint, she problem solved a way to travel to conferences. Most importantly, she sparked a global movement of protests and rallies led by passionate young people, which some call the Greta Thunberg effect. Many Branksom students att attended a climate strike in Queens Park last May, wielding signs and making clear their urgent call to action. Anthropologist and author Margaret Mead once said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. 
Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. You are never too young to make a difference. My next example happened last year during a memorable assembly when filmmaker, activist, and Academy Award recipient Charmaine Obeid Chinoy was our guest speaker. Charmaine tells her story about her dedicated work making documentaries for which she put her own personal safety at work at risk. These documentaries have chronicled the resilience of women facing inequality, such as the struggle of one Pakistani girl seeking legal justice after an attempted honor killing. She inspired an official in a Pakistani province to pass a law setting up speedier courts for women demanding justice. Yet, even with these remarkable achievements, she offered a piece of wisdom that I have carried with me ever since. She advised those of us who felt uncertain about how to engage in the difficult process of creating change to start change within our own communities. By impacting those immediately around us or finding more accessible opportunities, we create a ripple effect of good. Greta and Charmaine have both been creators of international change, but Charmaine reminded me that change can be big or small. And big change isn't the only change that matters. Change is just as important on a local and interpersonal level. We can also create change in the Branksome community. This past year, I was part of the Civil Discourse Working Group. Civil discourse means disagreeing without resorting to personal attacks and engaging in meaningful conversation where the goal is to understand instead of to win. At Branksome, this occurs within our classes and in programs such as debate and model United Nations. Even just sitting with a group of friends at lunch, it's common to delve deep into a subject where there might be a difference in opinion, whether it be a recent political development or who we are rooting for on RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> Civil discourse allows us to explore new possibilities instead of holding on to our own rigid and sometimes unexamined and unchallenged points of view. The work of this group was guided by the Branksome Hall values. Sense of community, inclusiveness, creativity, and making a difference. Making a difference takes many different forms at Branksome, and it also includes the everyday interactions and connections between people. I see this when someone offers to teach someone else the cheer choreography in preparation for Spirit Week. I see this when a locker is festively decorated with photos and streamers for a birthday. I see this when a new girl looking disoriented by the winding hallways of the senior school is offered the, the direction to her next class. It is clear that the open and friendly atmosphere of Ransom is truly unique and valuable. I believe that it is the shared understanding of our core values and the inherent goodwill of students and employees that fosters this environment. For me, when I walk into the AWC dining hall or the grad room, I know there will be someone who is open to conversation, or someone who will ask me how my history essay is going, or someone who will show me a funny meme. Many of you listening to me right now, even if you don't realize it, have made a significant difference to me with only a few kind words. I have felt safe enough to be vulnerable and share my authentic story, whether in front of a close friend or the whole school. Traveling and engaging globally may have broadened my scope of the world, but it is the warmth of the people around me at Branksome that anchors me. Ultimately, in order to make a difference, we need to be constantly engaged in a process where we are willing to think deeply, be open to feedback, and adapt to new possibilities. To commit yourself to making a difference is to stay resilient, even when the complex issues of the world seem discouraging. I sometimes ask myself the question, do I have the power to change the world for the better? The answer is always yes. The next question to ask is, how can we work towards this vision? This year, our prefect group, in selecting our motto, Redefine Remarkable, would like to help each one of us find our own answer to this question. There is no one set path, and this is a mindset we want to encourage. I used to believe that to be remarkable, I had to succeed academically or be recognized nationally for athletics. Then I began to realize that to be remarkable means something different for everyone. It can be challenging yourself and taking a risk even if you're not sure you will succeed. It can also be making yourself vulnerable and telling your story. 
Last year, I told my personal story at the East Asian Assembly about belonging and finding community. I was happy to share both my insecurities and hopes with the school, such as how lack of representation in the media affected me and how progress was being made. I wanted my impact to be raising awareness and encouraging empathy. However, once I said my piece and sat back down, I felt both catharsis and a bundle of nervous energy. How would my story be received? I have no way of knowing this, but in allowing myself to be authentic and truthful, I felt remarkable. As both an avid reader and writer, I have always loved storytelling, and I believe there is a storyteller in each of us. We had the agency to write our own stories and that of our shared community. By making choices to engage with the people around us in a positive way, we grow as individuals and as a community. You have the power to create change, whether big or small. I am optimistic about our future, one shaped by the innovators, leaders, and change makers of today. Branksome's next chapter is waiting to be written by all of us. Thank you. Elaine, thank you for that really powerful and thoughtful speech. You have given us such great examples of women activists and in so doing have inspired all of us to become change agents and also storytellers, authentic storytellers. Thank you very much. We all know we are in very good hands this year with you and your team of leaders. Thank you, Elaine. So we now come to the end of installation with the ceremony of the flags, which is the symbolic handing over of responsibility to this year's leaders. We are pleased to have alum leaders from previous years with us this afternoon. This beautiful ceremony is a way for us as a school community to recognize and celebrate the continuity of our values and traditions. Today, we incorporate our values, sense of community, inclusiveness, creativity, and making a difference into this important flag ceremony. The four colored flags represent truth, honesty, justice, and purity, and have for over a century been symbols of our school's commitment to these, our original values. The fifth flag is the school flag, and it is adorned with the Branksome crest, which is familiar to all of our students because it's the same crest which is on your tie pin. The wreath of maple leaves surrounding the crest reminds us that we are a Canadian school. And the book and the spindle in the middle of the crest represent knowledge and industry, Branksome's original school motto. And finally, our current school motto, Keep Well the Road, comes from the inscription over the entrance to the original Branksome Castle in Scotland, thus honoring our school's Scottish origins. Our motto reminds all of us that as members of the Branksome community, it is our duty to always do our best as caring and knowledgeable citizens of the world. We will now have the ceremony of the flags Will our alum leaders and this year's prefects please come forward? So we're ready now for the ceremony of the flags to begin. And I will call upon Helia Vreskin to pass the flag to Head Prefect Elaine Lee to symbolize the transfer of leadership. And some of you may not know that Helia Vreskin was our Head Prefect. This flag 
flag symbolizes the spirit of the school, which I pass on to you, that you may lead in the further growth of that spirit and maintain the traditions that lie behind it. I take this flag and promise to maintain the traditions that lie behind the spirit of the school. Next, the red, green, black, and white flags are exchanged between past and current leaders. Tracy Douglish, Denise Smith, Kimberly Carter, and Kristen Cuthbert. This concludes the ceremony of the flags. Thank you, alum leaders. You may return to your seats. Well, that brings us to the end of installation. And in closing, let me just say a few final remarks. Today's installation has been about celebrating each one of you as you begin your personal leadership journey this year. I hope that each one of you will have powerfully meaningful experiences as well as wonderfully connected ones. We are all so very fortunate to be part of this Branksome community, and I have never felt prouder than I do today. Thank you, everyone, for being with us this afternoon. And as we conclude today's installation, we will sing our school song, Keep Well the Road, and this will be followed by the Piper, who will first lead the student leaders and then the platform party out, I ask everyone then to remain seated while Dr. Boomerang gives the instructions for our dismissal. So let everyone now please stand and let's sing Keep Well the Road.